स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया In this lecture, we are going to talk about some properties of Laplace equation. So, as you have seen, let's say uh, you are given a problem like this to solve. Yeah, we, we were interested in solving this problem, right? Is equals to f in omega and u equals to g on the boundary, right? Yes. So, what we have seen, we have seen that if there exists u in c two um, omega. Let's say that C or one solving one solving one then the solution is unique. Yeah. So what I meant by this is uh, if there is a solution and that solution is unique. Yeah. And we also saw that if you need to find a solution, you just look at a corresponding energy function, and that particular energy function, if you remember, is half of gra uh, gradient u dot gradient w minus half of uh, minus integral f w. Okay. If you if you I mean on that admissible set A, uh, which is u equals to g on the boundary, in on that set, if you just minimize that energy function, and then you get the solution of that problem. So these are the two properties which you have seen. Now. The point is this: see, Laplace equation. See, most of the times, see, the idea is this: most of the times, if you need to solve this equation, yeah. Uh, so, why do we need to solve this equation? Essentially, we want to see what are the functions which satisfies this equation, right? And most of the times, it is actually very difficult to, you know, actually explicitly write down that function, the solution, okay? Right. Now, what is the next best thing? The next best thing is to look for some information on the solution. So let us let us assume that we cannot solve the problem. Yeah, and most of the times we do not need to solve the problem. We just need to understand how the problem behaves. Okay. So let me put it in this code. Okay. Most times one needs to. understand how solutions behave you understand behave so let us uh, uh, say that uh, where the solution attains a maxima or let us assume that uh, i mean what sort of solutions are there i mean uh, are all solutions bounded or not that sort of question okay so we want to look at those properties now to study this equation uh, we st first start with the laplace equation so basically uh, we we start with this equation we start with with laplacian of u equals to 0 so basically harmonic functions okay we start with harmonic functions so harmonic functions so you remember any function okay which satisfies this equation is called a harmonic function okay so essentially what i meant is See, we want to talk about the properties of harmonic function. Yeah. See, this is uh, why it is important. Is, so let me tell you why it is important. Where it is important. I mean, what can you do with this information? So, let's say you want to study later on in your course. Of course, it, this is I mean the fundamental operator in PDs. If you want to study, let's say harmonic analysis. Okay harmonic analysis. Then also, this is the fundamental object which you study in harmonic analysis. Okay analysis laplace uh, sorry harmonic function and this is also a fundamental object which you study in differential geometry okay differential geometry and you also get it in functional analysis okay functional analysis so you see there is a lot of i mean other than mathematical physics there is a I mean huge application in physics for this uh, operator but along with that if you just concentrate on mathematics there are a lot of different places where this uh, kind of operator pops on and you have to know what are the properties of the operator of the solutions of that operator without um, you know explicitly solving so these are called harmonic functions as I have told you and uh, the first property which I am going to prove is a very important property it's called a mean value property okay. So it's called a mean value property. 
mean value property okay of harmonic function so please remember this thing that this is not a property for any function i mean you cannot expect that any function will satisfy this property but uh, only harmonic functions okay so what it says is this so uh, of course we are assuming omega is open and all that huh? i'm not uh, I'm, I'm going on about it so uh, we'll define something huh? so a clear uh, simple notation which i want to write here is if i write it like this over omega integral uh, this this means the average of u okay over something let's say d of x huh? the average of u this mm, over omega yeah this uh, means the average of u average of u over omega over omega and what does it mean it means that you take the integral of u over omega and divide it by the mm, i mean volume of omega okay if you know uh, measure theory uh, it basically you just divide it with the measure of omega okay so one by in terms of measure theory you divide it by measure of omega integral over omega u dx okay if you do not know measure theory don't worry about it it basically says that you just divide it with the volume of omega okay and similarly if i write it like this del omega u dx okay then it means that the average of u of u over the boundary of omega and that is divide defined by 1 by the measure of del omega this is the surface measure okay integral omega u dx yeah so let me explain again if you know measure theory yes i mean you don't need to know it but if you know then this is essentially the integral of u dx so basically you know the sum total of whatever u is in the area of u and you divide it um, the area under u and you divide it with the measure of the set over which you are integrating okay if you know measure theory in that terms i'm saying if you are not comfortable with measure theory it essentially says that you take the total area under the curve view and you divide it out with the area of i mean area or uh, in r2 it is area in r3 or rn you call it a volume volume of omega clear volume of omega so let's say in a ball it's just uh, basically whatever is inside the volume of the ball uh, if you take omega to be ball and you just divide it out that's your average right and similarly here on del omega it's the same uh, average of u over del omega and in terms of measure theory you say it is uh, integral of u sorry this is d sorry uh, i have to write it properly this is mistake huh? this is ds and this is del omega so basically the uh, you take whatever u does so basically you take all the points in u sum it up that's what integral is right and after that you just divide it out with the measure of the boundary this is the surface measure surface measure of the uh, boundary of omega okay so if you are uh, not comfortable with measure then what it says is you take the integral of u over the boundary clear and you divide it out with the surface area so let's say if you are thinking of a ball in r2 think of a sphere in r2 so let's say s2 okay subset of r3 Okay. think of a ball just your cricket let's say cricket ball kind of thing yeah uh, you take the surface of the ball that's the surface huh? and the area of the ball you guys already know right so basically this is this is 4 pi r okay and this is 4 by 3 pi r cube right pi r square sorry pi r mm, yeah pi r square okay so essentially what i'm trying to say is uh, you are basically looking at the surface of the ball you take the area surface area of the ball and you divide it out if omega is an arbitrary thing you just take the surface area and divide it out okay right now let us talk about the theorem so this is one of the most important theorems uh, in all of analysis or uh, at least pdes yeah it's called a mean value theorem for laplace equation and it says that if u is in c2 omega okay is harmonic so if you are looking at a harmonic function which is in c2 omega okay then then u of x can be written as integral the average of u x r u ds this is equals to integral b 
x r u t x okay so what it is saying is if you take the average of u over the uh, over the ball the surface of the ball okay so this holds for all for each ball v x r okay which is containing omega so essentially it is saying that you take a omega right whatever omega is let's say omega and you are given a harmonic function in omega okay then uh, you take any point x yeah you take any point x you want to know what is the value of x uh, value of u at that point x okay you take any ball around that point if you take the average of u average of u over that ball okay over the whole ball then that is going to be ux and similarly if you just take the average of u over just the surface of the ball then also you are going to get ux that's what harmony mean value property means okay so very very important so essentially it is saying to think of u as a temperature distribution huh? in a equilibrium so basically after some time the temperature stabilizes right so temperature distribution what it is saying is uh, i mean if you just look at a uh, if you want to find out the temperature at one single point you look at the neighborhood of that point okay the average the average temperature at that point if you divide it out by the total i mean area of that uh, i mean whatever the region you are looking at then that will give you the temperature at that point okay so that's what it is saying that's intuitively quite clear so the proof the proof is a little technical proof okay so let uh, i mean I, I will explain every um, step of it but what i need you to do is please i will i am requesting you to go through this proof yourself okay just write it down yourself properly every single detail i will explain every single line here okay but you have to do it yourself so what we do is this so we uh, first of all uh, fix or maybe set huh set a new function phi of r okay phi of r which is which is integral over the average huh? average over the ball the boundary of the ball u dx okay this i am uh, defining see this is a function of r why because if you change r r is greater than 0 right r is greater than 0 uh, radius of the ball so basically this is a function of the radius the radius changes this phi of r changes right that should be the case so this is a function of r so i have, I have defined this thing now this let us write it properly this is essentially del b x r u of y ds y right u of y ds y okay now what i am doing is this see y where is y y is on the boundary right y is on the boundary here huh? and that is x okay so if you take z to be so if you take z to be y minus x by r okay then uh, y is basically x plus z r right and uh, um, i mean where do you think z will be z will be on the surface of the um, ball with center at zero and radius one right so therefore if you see that see what is the mod of z mod z is one right because y minus x is basically r okay so this is the ball with radius r essentially r okay. uh, let me zoom it so zoom zoom version that is your y and this is the center x this is the point where we need to find u i want to find what is the value of u at that point and i am taking uh, any any i am just fixing a ball okay r fix r so the ball is fixed i am taking any uh, y on the surface of the ball okay on the boundary okay so y minus x this this y minus x is vector and you, um, this is the radius is r right the radius is r so if you take uh, z to be y minus x by r what is mod z mod z is 1 right mod z is 1 okay so therefore i can write so essentially what uh, where is z lying on i'm just changing the variable in such a way that z is lying uh, i mean uh, on the boundary of the ball okay um, which is centered at 0 and radius 1 right okay so phi of r can be written like this no i mean just change the variable here c when I divide this thing out, so basically I am taking the uh, uh, the surface area of the uh, 
ball right just the surface area of the ball so that is given by in rn that is given by 1 by n alpha n alpha n is the uh, total volume of the ball alpha n is the volume of the n dimensional ball right r power n minus 1 if you write this thing properly del b xr u of y dsy right and here alpha n is the uh, volume of unit n ball unit n ball unit n ball means i mean you, you take a ball with center at 0 and radius 1 alpha n is the volume of that uh, ball right okay see now if you write it properly you see uh, i mean i just want to change it to z so that will give me n alpha n integral uh, del b 0 1 okay u of i will change y to x plus r z okay see y is x plus r z okay and d s y uh, is getting changed to d s z okay and uh, for this change of variable from y to z there is a jacobian right what is the jacobian it is r power n minus 1 okay please check this part from this uh, y i am taking this y to be uh, y minus x to be rz right so if i take this change of variable the jacobian of this uh, i mean change is r to the power n minus 1 right so that r to the power n minus 1 and this is getting cancelled and i have this so this is there and uh, therefore therefore phi prime of r can i talk about phi prime of r of course you see uh, because uh, phi is a uh, differentiable function u is a continuous function the integral of a continuous function is differentiable so phi is differentiable now you see it is n alpha n if i take the integral with respect to r this de derivative phi prime of r is the derivative with respect to r if i take the derivative that i can take inside y because this integral is with respect to z yeah it has nothing to do with r so i can take it inside yeah and you see this ball this is a fixed ball with center 0 and radius 1 okay if you do that then that will give you the derivative of this with respect to r so which is gradient of x plus r z okay dot z ds of z okay now what i want you to do is take two seconds take five seconds and think about why did i do this change of variable right so uh, maybe you have got it maybe you didn't what uh, happened is this see i want to see what is phi prime of r okay if i want to do phi prime of r over here if i just take the derivative here this the, here the integral is uh, with respect to r right yeah so if i'm taking the derivative i don't know how to handle this thing so because this integral is with respect to r and i'm taking the derivative with respect to r. that's a problem yeah so that is why what i did is i did a change of variable and made this integral independent of r you understood here r is fine but here on the integral if there is r there we are in a problem right so we do not want that that is why i just made a change of variable made this integral independent of r huh? so independent independent of r okay once it is independent of r then i can take this derivative and this r ddr that will go inside yeah without uh, affecting this integral it will go inside and it will um, uh, using chain rule i can just write it down so this is chain rule right chain rule again i i am urging you to please go through this calculation okay so if this is the case now you see i can use my uh, green's theorem here right? so once it is inside now i can just replace it by y again yeah let's just change it to y so uh, if i change it to y again r power 1 by r power n minus 1 the jacobian thing will come out and this will become 1 by n alpha n r power n minus 1 okay see i just wanted to take the derivative that is why i change it to z okay now i am just changing it to changing back to y so this is xr the integral okay and this is gradient of u y z is y minus x by r yeah and ds of y okay see from here to here the jacobian is r power n minus 1 if you are going the other way the jacobian is 1 by r power n minus 1 that is why this so this is essentially again uh, del v x comma r 
gradient of u y x minus sorry uh, it is y minus x by r ds of y okay this is there so if this is there then what can we get you see uh, from here del b x r okay gradient of u y uh, times y minus x by r ds y yeah this what is y minus s by r if if this is the ball y minus x by r that actually points to the unit outward normal right so this is essentially del u by del gamma ds of y okay that is clear why why this gamma what is this gamma gamma is the unit outward normal unit outward normal outward normal to del v xr right see if this is the ball right what is the unit outward normal in this direction it is y minus x by r right okay so um, and you know that what is del u del gamma del u del gamma is gradient of u dot gamma gamma is this one so that is why it is del u del gamma see gradient of u dot gamma that is defined by if you don't know this thing please uh, i mean re read it it is del u del gamma okay this is what we define so the, the, and your gamma in this case is y minus x by r because it is a unit outward normal and that is why you write it like this okay once you do that you see if you now you can use uh, gauss uh, you remember gauss divergence theorem divergence theorem okay you use gauss divergence theorem and you can actually say this is r by n there will be r by n okay because uh, you see if you multiply it by r by n it will be you can write it like b x r okay please i mean i want you to check this part how is this r by n is coming why r by n is coming because you see i am defining i am changing del b x r to b x r so from the boundary of the ball i am changing it to the um, ball itself okay inside of the ball so that is why when i am changing it uh, the volume is r to the power n alpha n r to the power n that is and here it is there is r power n minus 1 okay that is why this r is there so please check this part from here to here just break it up i mean it's not very difficult just break it up it will come okay and this is the laplacian of u dx okay if you remember this formula we just did this thing first class again i am urging you to please check that how this r by n is coming just break it up it is this is equals to 1 by n alpha and r power n minus 1 right and when you change this thing integral over b x r you divide it so basically without this cross sign you just write it as 1 by alpha n r power n that is why that n extra is there and r extra is there okay now laplacian of u on bxr we already know that it is zero because laplacian of u is zero on the whole domain okay so on bxr it is sorry this is y okay so one on bxr this is going to be zero c laplacian of u i have assumed that u is a harmonic function in omega b of xr is contained in omega right so laplacian of zero uh, u is zero on bxr so this is zero now so phi prime r is zero therefore phi prime r is zero okay yeah uh, what does that say it says that phi is constant constant right and so phi of r what is phi of r phi of r is limit t tends to zero phi of t okay and that is limit t tends to 0 um, del b x t u of y d s y clear of course it is because phi is constant right so i mean phi at the point 0 and phi at the point r they are going to be same essentially right okay so this is true and it, since phi of t is defined by this i'm just writing it like this so limit t tends to zero this now this thing if you calculate please check this part this is going to be u of x so for a continuous function you can check this this integral if you take 
with the limit t tends to 0 this will be u of x okay so this part you have to check it yourself okay take a continuous function so essentially how do you check this thing so a small hint how do you check this thing you take um, 1 by this is n alpha n t to the power n minus 1 okay u of y dsy minus u of x you have to show this is small right as t tends to n so this you can write it as 1 by n alpha n t to the power n minus 1 del b okay integral over del b u of y minus u of x d s y okay please remember this thing see what is happening is this i can take this ux inside why i can take this ux inside it is less than equals to okay why i can take see this is equals to if you take equals to you can write it as ui minus ux dsy if you do that there is a um, i mean if you take this integral here also then there is a wall uh, a surface area of this ball which will get included that will get cancelled out and that is why this one is there so if you break this thing up it will look like this and after that i'm just taking a mod inside that is why this less than equals to okay if you are getting confused here you can just later ask why it is happening but uh, i mean it's not very difficult you please check this part huh? and after that you see u is continuous so on this ball as t tends to uh, as the radius of the ball decreases this actually comes together i mean comes very close to each other and that is why you can make it very small hence this clear so you have to check this part right so that is what what we showed is this phi of r this is equals to so integral over so the average of u over the boundary is equals to u of x yeah now i just have to show the other way that uh, u of x is also the average of u over the ball okay now integral over bxr u dy okay this is equals to if you remember this is the radial how to integrate radial functions okay del b x s u t s d s this is the surface integral okay d s or this is small d s so essentially what am i doing you see you want to integrate u over this ball okay so any function let's say you want to integrate over some ball okay so essentially what you can do is you can you can take a small boundary of a ball some small boundary like this of some smaller ball okay so i want to integrate it over this whole ball okay what i'm doing is i'm taking the same center i'm taking a circle which is with the same center i'm just looking at the boundary of this thing so first of all if you integrate this boundary and after that you know you run this uh, radius of this smaller ball from 0 to whatever let's say here it is r okay 0 to r then you get the whole area right so that is what the idea is from uh, you first of all integrate over an arbitrary um, s radius ball s is less than r and after that you run s between 0 and r and you are done okay now if you calculate this thing what exactly is this thing this is 0 to r if you know from here what do you get it is n alpha n it is n alpha n okay s to the power n minus 1 if you calculate this thing okay because u of x is constant right see all of this is u of x and uh, I, there is no x here included so u of x is there okay and d of s okay so u of x you can take it outside and when you integrate this particular thing you get alpha n r power n okay and hence therefore if you multiply this alpha n r power n here 1 by alpha n r power n b x r u d y that is going to be equals to u of x right so u of x is the average of u over the ball or the average of u over the boundary of the ball okay and this is the mean value property okay now what we are going to do is so this is please remember this that this happens because this is a harmonic function 
so given a harmonic function it will satisfy the mean value property now the question is this let is the converse true so the question is is the converse true clear so uh, th there is a, this theorem which i am going to prove now the theorem says that if u in c2 omega okay satisfies satisfies ux equals to integral over the average of u u ds okay if this satisfies this for each ball bxr which is contained in omega then u is harmonic u is harmonic okay uh, let me write it properly because i wrote some. i can't read what i wrote is harmonic okay so essentially what it is saying is this theorem and the above theorem if you just add it together it says that if you have a harmonic function it will if it, uh, i mean it will satisfy the mean value property and if a function is there which satisfy the mean value property then this that function is going to be harmonic okay so this is an exclusive property of harmonic function so let us look at the proof the proof is quite simple huh? so it's not very difficult so if laplacian of u is not equals to zero okay so essentially wh what is happening is this see we have to show that if it satisfies the mean value property then u is harmonic right so let's say u is not harmonic what does that mean it means that there exists x naught x naught in omega such that such that laplacian of u is at the point x naught and the point x naught is non-zero clear okay and see u is in c2 omega since u is in c2 of omega this will imply laplacian of u is in c omega okay because laplacian of u is twice differentiable u x x plus u y y u is in c2 so u x x plus u y y that is continuous okay now so laplacian of u is a continuous function yeah at some point on the domain that is non-zero that implies there exists a neighborhood delta greater than 0 such that u of x is non-zero for all x in b x naught delta clear yeah? so essentially what it is saying is uh, it is saying that u x so this is by the neighborhood property of continuous function neighborhood property of continuous function i am quite sure all of you guys know this yeah so see what is happening is i am assuming that there is a point where it is non-zero if this is not harmonic right if that happens since laplacian of u is continuous function u is given to be c2 right so laplacian of u is continuous since laplacian of u is a continuous function and u at one point is non-zero then by neighborhood property of continuous functions we can say that there is a neighborhood around x naught where u is non-zero right if that happens then i mean uh, you can define phi as above so define phi as above phi of r to be that uh, whatever we defined just earlier okay if we do that then we have seen that phi prime of r is zero yeah L just uh, uh, earlier whatever we did phi prime of r is zero yeah for the same phi and that is equals to if you remember just look at the earlier calculation huh? i'm not doing that part again r by n integral b x r laplacian of ui dy okay i mean just look at the earlier calculation see you do realize that uh, just just a few minutes back we have proved this thing right just look at the other part so it is r by n integral bx r the average of this laplacian of ui dy now you see this i can change this r to delta na, right uh, this holds for any ball so i can change r to delta and this happens now on bx x you change it to x naught okay x is change it to x naught yeah so you see the ball with center at x naught and radius delta what is laplacian of u laplacian of u sorry this is laplacian of u laplacian of u will be non 
I mean not equals to 0. So for now let's just assume that it is positive. I mean if it is non-zero in this place it is either positive or negative right yeah. So that is the uh, I mean property of a continuous function if it is non-zero it is either positive or negative yeah. So let's say it is positive if it is positive then this particular thing has to be greater than 0. If it is negative, it is strictly less than 0. It cannot be 0, of course, right? Because, uh, I mean, in that ball, it is either positive or negative in the whole ball. So, the whole integral is going to be positive. Yeah. If that happens, you are basically showing that 0 is equals to this, is equals to this, which is greater than 0. So, basically, you showed that 0 is greater than 0. That's a contradiction. Contradiction. Okay. So, I think it is clear. Okay, so let me explain again what we are doing. See, essentially we are saying that if you have a C2 function and it satisfies ux um, equals to uh, this mean value property, okay, the average of u over the boundary of a ball, if that is u of x for each ball, then for each ball, that is very important, huh? not for a fixed ball, but for every ball in omega, then u is harmonic. That's what it is saying. How do I prove it? Let's say it is not harmonic. If it is not harmonic, then essentially there is some point in omega where Laplacian of u at the point x0 is non-zero, right? Now, see, if u is in C2 of omega, it is given, yeah? So, uh, u is in C2 of omega means u of xs and u of yy are both continuous. So, the sum is continuous, so Laplacian of u is continuous function. Now, we just assume that there is a point where u is non-zero. So, basically, Laplacian of u is non-zero. So basically Laplacian of u is a continuous function which is non-zero at single point. Neighborhood property gives us a neighborhood of x0 where Laplacian of u is non-zero. Clear? Now you just do whatever we did earlier. We define a phi of r like uh, in the average of u over the boundary and we have shown that phi prime of r is zero, right? That we did. So that is equals to what will happen? If you just look at the earlier calculation, it is given by delta by n integral over the ball. Uh, the average over the ball of Laplacian u dy. Yeah, just the calculation which you did. Please just look at that calculation. Now, what is happening is this: see, this in this ball. So uh, this holds for any ball which is in omega, right? So I can just take this particular ball x naught and uh, delta. So this particular thing, u at the point x naught is given by this phi prime of r. Phi prime of r. This is uh, is phi prime of delta. Let's write it as delta. Okay, phi prime of delta that is going to be zero uh, if you change r to delta. Okay, and uh, b of r naught. Uh, see in this thing, either Laplacian of u is positive or negative in the whole ball, right? So let's say it is positive. If it is positive, then we have shown zero is greater than zero. If it is negative, then we have shown zero is less than zero. Bo in both the cases, it's a contradiction, right? So what is happening is there cannot be a point x naught where Laplacian of u is non-zero and hence u is. Higher. With this, we are going to end this lecture.